Hello and a very warm welcome to our Lean Six Sigma Masters Series. And this is the first of the five phases within the Demaic sequence. And the first phase, as you can see, is called the Define phase. As you would expect in Module 1, I'm going to present to you an overview of the Define phase. The Lean Six Sigma Master Series has been designed to fully prepare you for the Lean Six Sigma Green Belt, otherwise known as Practitioner, exam. Hi, my name is Dave Litton from the Projects Academy. But first, you need to be aware that there is a prerequisite to this, the Define phase. Let me explain. As you can see top right here, we've designed this master series within six phases, not five. The reason for that is that we have an additional and first step called Lean Six Sigma Foundations. I've just repeated here the 18 modules and topics that our Lean Six Sigma Foundations will have already given to you. And it's therefore important that you must have gone through those first as a prerequisite before you can start the first of the five Demaic phases, this one called the Define phase. So this is where we are in the first of the five steps of Demaic. You will therefore be aware that Demaic is a data-driven improvement cycle used for improving, optimizing, and then stabilizing business processes and designs. And you'll also be aware that this Demaic improvement cycle is the core tool used to drive Six Sigma projects. Lean Six Sigma will normally use the framework of a project to plan and implement all five of the Demaic improvement cycle. So here in the defined phase are the 16 modules that you and I will be going through. Here we are in module one. As I've said, it's the define phase overview. Then we'll look at the checklist, then process mapping tools, moving on to the charter, something called the SIPOC method, the all important voice of the customer, leading on to something called critical to quality requirements, otherwise known as CTQ. We'll then cover the Pareto chart, the Kano model, cover customer satisfaction and loyalty, and then go through the all important affinity diagram finishing off with something called the five s's now this last module module 16 will introduce you to these five steps which are based on the lean part of lean six sigma and you'll be wanting to use these five steps as i take you through the rest of the lean six sigma demaic phases very good so that's the backdrop just before we proceed do remember that you have an accompanying handbook for the define phase which contains graphics of every single slide in each of these 16 videos. So having that to hand will help you make notes if you feel the need as I take you through the 16 videos. All right, so let's roll our sleeves up and make a start. So here we are then in the DMAIC project define phase. What the define phase is all about is to understand why you, the organization, are undertaking this project and what exactly do you want to achieve. A key player here, as you learned in the fundamentals training, is called the sponsor. And it's the sponsor and the team will want to agree on the project scope and goals. Plus, of course, its financial and performance targets. If you recall, scope means what's included and what isn't. In other words, what's in and what's out. And because all projects need resources and funding, we clearly need to understand what the project's financial and performance targets are. More of that shortly. So one of the first important questions to ask is, is there a business case worth pursuing? Any organization at any point in time will almost certainly have a rich source of potential projects, but which ones do you run first? And for that reason, all projects are accompanied by their own business case. And the business case answers, why are we doing this? Is it justified? And this will normally include metrics such as the benefits, costs, risk, as well as something called an investment appraisal, which uses financial metrics to determine if indeed the project is worth pursuing. So keeping the business focus here just for the moment, the first step here is to define this opportunity, making sure this opportunity, the project if you will, has clear boundaries and measurable goals. Of course, we need to ensure that any project aligns itself with business strategies, problems, initiatives, and so on and so forth. And most importantly, 
our customer, which may be internal or external, will in fact benefit from these improvements that the project will deliver. Second, we need to identify the potential customers. Are they internal customers, for example another department or a group, or are they external, possibly end users of our products or services? You'll be familiar with some of this jargon, and that's we need first of all to collect what's known as the voice of the customer, or VOC. We'll be diving into that in detail within the define phase. We need to collect the voice of the business, VOB, information. But in effect, the voice of the business checks that there is a viable, desirable and achievable business case. We then need to identify critical to quality requirements, otherwise known as CTQ. We need to get the voice of the customer first, and then from that, we can generate the critical to quality requirements. Don't worry, we'll be going into full detail within the defined phase. And third, to review the project charter. Now the sponsor will normally provide a draft or initial project charter and it's part of the define phase that we want to refine that project charter as part of signing off and agreeing at the end of the define phase. So we'll want to discuss this with the sponsor, almost certainly negotiate compromises such as constraints and assumptions, any adjustments to the scope of the project, as well as understanding what the required resources are, that's people and budget of course, schedule, its time frame, and key timing aspects, such as for example, when each of the DMAIC phases start and complete. So, the define phase is the first step of the Lean Six Sigma improvement process. Now this is a critical phase where the team outlines the project focus for both themselves and of course leadership of the organization. The focus here is on a meaningful but manageable problem that impacts the customer and from that develop what's known as a problem statement. An obvious thing here of course is to ask the question, how big is the problem or how severe is it? So the project team drafts or updates the project charter. Another key deliverable you'll learn about is we need to build a high level map of the process involved. Now let me explain. The process here, of course, is the problem itself. Remember that Lean Six Sigma is to understand the process problem areas and to fix them. And the first step, therefore, is to understand the flow, if you will, of this process under consideration. Also within the defined phase, we begin to explore the needs of the customers related to the above mentioned process. Now, it's important to be specific in order to provide perspective on the issue or the problem of the process. And to this end, we develop what's known as a goal statement, which should be a direct reflection, an answer, if you will, of the problem statement. Now, this problem statement defines in measurable, time-bound terms, in other words, within a time frame, exactly when the team and the project will be considered successful. Here's a simple example. A goal statement might say, if orders are 10% late, then the goal might be to cut that down to only 5% late. So before you start, we need to review, if you will, the first draft project charter, normally created by the sponsor or sponsors. Plus, we need to know that there has been a team allocated and at least some form of initial budget. In many organizations, you'll find the team will book their time to the DMAIC project. And the define phase is no different. Of course, there may be non-human elements that need to be costed. The customers. We need to understand which internal and or external customers will be affected by the project and what exactly their needs are. We'll get into something called high-level process maps, and this would at a minimum include what's known as a SIPOC diagram. We'll dive into that in a later module. And also to verify the scope what's in and what's out, and something, called a, and something called a value stream map may also be needed. We need to generate the voice of the customer, known as VOC, and it enables you to understand exactly what the customer's requirements are. Once we've got that, we can lead on to these critical to quality requirements, and these help focus on those requirements by providing a basis for process measurement. Remember the M in DMAIC stands for measure, so we'll be using our critical to quality requirements in the measurement phase as well. 
The other thing we need to consider here are plans in terms of communication plans and project plans. Now, a useful skill here is that of project management. Although you won't be examined on that in the Lean Six Sigma exam, I need to state right now that it's very helpful that having an understanding how to manage projects is an asset to ensuring Lean Six Sigma success. If you'd like to learn more about project management, then do check out our Projects Academy PMP Masterclass, as this will lead you to a professional project management qualification if you wish. As an absolute minimum, it will provide you with a professional qualification covering exactly what best practice project management looks like. So there we have it, just a very brief overview of the divine phase. Do join me in module two, when you and I will be diving into a little more detail as I take you through the defined phase checklist. So for me, Dave, it's bye for now.